I'm Daryl Della, and 10 years ago, I directed a movie called The Corpse That Got Away. Since then, I think we've made a lot of great films that I'm very proud of, but The Corpse That Got Away is still one of my favorites, mostly because it, it was a movie of firsts for us. It was one of the first movies that we wrote an actual script for. It was our first movie with a set. It was the first movie with Chris Cairo. Come on, you're not even trying. I don't fucking point. know what the fuck you want. I don't know. I, I, Just I, do three more. All right. First movie with Becker. Nice to meet you, Becker. Nice to meet you, Becker. Bro. And I think this movie really started us on a path to getting to where we are today. You can trace a lot of things from modern Dollars and Donuts productions back to the corpse that got away. So the origin of The Corpse That Got Away starts uh, at the Academy of Art University where Ray and I were going to college. We had made a bunch of films together when we were teenagers and had just sort of had a, kind of a falling out. We weren't talking uh, for a little bit. And one of his projects that he made on his own was The Corpse That Got Away. Hold it. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm uh, Ray Ravello, uh, and about 10 years ago, I was um, an actor in a movie, and I helped write the uh, screenplay. And apparently I was an executive uh, producer, too, at the time, uh, on a movie called The Corpse That Got Away. Some time went by, we started hanging out again, we were friends again, and I remember him showing me that. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, so it was basically a... a, a, a a movie I had to do for a film class, uh, which was shot on um, eight millimeter film, and so there was no sound, and you basically had to try to tell a story in just images. The movie that I had made for the same project was called Those Awful Crutches, a comedy with Lorenzo Ocon breaking his leg and, and dancing around on crutches. The idea I had was uh, there's a guy who these two hitmen had to kill, but they didn't finish the job, and then he makes a run for it, and then we filmed it, and then I ran out of film somewhere in the middle of it, so only half of it was shot. It, 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 it literally, the role um, ended at the coolest part where Chris Cairo, who's in this one, was in the original one, and uh, with uh, another guy named Alex Monfred, and also first time working with Michael Martin, I forgot about that. Yeah, he just showed up. The movie was half finished, but I still thought it was great. and. And quite frankly, I was jealous uh, that Ray had continued our uh, violent streak. He, he kept making the type of crime movies that we wanted to make when we were teenagers, uh, whereas I had made a cartoon comedy. So I thought it was just so cool that he had kept going with that. And something about the title. He had a great title, and we talked about, hey, let's remake it. You know, he didn't get to finish it the first time all the way through. I wished that I had directed it. So we joined forces once more and locked ourselves in my room, my old room at my parents' house. And I think we cranked out that script in about an hour. So I was working, I was working selling car audio installation parts at the time. And I had a coworker named Andrew, his name was Andrew Song, and his family owned a, a sushi bar in Mubray. But I remember when we started writing the script really fast when we figured out we were gonna put it in a sushi restaurant. Uh, we went and took a tour of it, and knowing the geography of the place really helped the script come alive because we knew, oh, we have a garage, we've got a stairwell that goes around, comes around the back of the sushi restaurant, and we can use the kitchen area, we can use the dining room, we can use the whole thing. So we sat there and started typing out the script, and we're just making each other laugh and coming up with stupid lines for the characters to say. And so, yeah, there was, uh, that's what I wrote. Writing the script was really fun, actually. That was a really yeah. fun time writing a script. We knew we wanted to cast Chris Cairo just because we always did. <laughs> Don't look at me though. Don't look at me though. <laughs> we knew Cairo from high school, and when we were making all our early films, we were always asking him to come be in them. Uh, in fact, we wrote a part for him in The Golden Hoot, the first Frank Barnett movie that we never finished. 
So when Corpse That Got Away finally came around, we knew we needed to get Cairo in there. I only really, well actually every time I, I tried to well, direct no, a no, school no. project, Chris Cairo was in it. Uh, I know, Rod. Hey, no, <laughs> don't, don't Rod me. We don't do new cats this deep in the game. I, yeah. I remember when we wrote the script, there was like a lot more in the, in the script than actually showed up in the movie. Like I don't even know if they say me and Cairo's character's names in the movie. They're Dennis and Roger, I remember. And I remember just as we were writing, the Texan character kind of came out of nowhere and sort of just took over the script. It was like they always say when you're writing and, and the characters sort of start writing the story for you and it totally happened here. Once we figured out, oh, sushi restaurant, we thought, oh, there's gonna be some geishas in there. And then we're like, geishas, hmm, who would, who would be a funny character to uh, wanna uh, sleep with some geishas? Oh, how about a, a wily uh, Texas, like uh, oil tycoon type guy? And then we're like, all right, uh, oh, Becker looks like that. So we're gonna get Becker. I am uh, Becker Von Felsberg. I play Big Texan, or Texan, or just a Texas guy, right? He called me Big Texas at one point, and this, it's mostly because that was the name of a, uh, a cinnamon roll. We knew Becker uh, had the manic energy and the size to be this uh, larger-than-life Texan, wily, crazy, uh, cartoon Texan man. But it had been years since I had seen him. I don't think I had really spoken to him much since high school. And then uh, I, I haven't seen you guys in a few years, and then I ran into you at Best Buy. And then he called me one night, and I was like, you want to be in, you, hey, you want to play a Texas guy? And I'm like, okay. Yeah! <laughs> I just remember, I just remember being in a lot of pain. I like those boots. I like those boots. <laughs> Do you want to rest a bit? No, I'm good. I'm good. You good? Yeah. I remember, uh, I remember one part where I'm uh, filming in the parking lot, and we're doing that thing to make it look like we were driving. My mother always told me I was a Texan man. We weren't. It's movie magic, and so we just had two uh, two bozos doing laps around the car with flashlights. Uh, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> there was actually the the name of the text, and his name was in the script. It was Clinton Elhorn, uh, which was an idea that I vetoed. I didn't want to call the text in anything, and certainly not Clinton, as I am no fan of the former president, uh, and I didn't want to have anything in there that could be seen as possibly a tribute or an endorsement of any kind. Action. You ever had Texas toast before? Like real Texas toast from Texas? There's Texas toast I have here? No, they ain't got to cut it here. I just do not like it. I don't think, I think it's crap. I think it's crap. Because I'm all over Texas, because right there, because Texas toast is that big right there. But excuse me ladies, I'm going to go take a squat. I don't know. I just remember, I I don't know, there's, there's a whole bunch of like, because I remember doing like several takes. It's telling me to just talk about something random the whole time. So you always eat meat, right? You guys eat meat in the whatever goddamn China, um, uh, uh, China, what um, land you're from, right? Yeah. 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 Bagels are east. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got the square bagels, and Texas is being really hot. <laughs> and then uh, I came, and something about, I was like, I got in my mansion. Man, let me tell you something about Texas, man. It is so damn hot there, and so I just walk around my house, my mansion. Mind you, I walk on my mansion, but Nate, the whole time. I swear. He did mention, like, oh, I got something in my pants, must be a, a squirrel moving around my, my pants. I, I just kind of remember that. <laughs> it's not, you don't want, like, if you, uh, if you got a gift, just exploit it as much as you can. And then you want, know when I get older, I was into playing like a prospector now, or like, or maybe a, a mayor character. This is producer Ray Ravello. What's going on? And that's a wrap. Can you put me in sepia now? Like, like, instead of maybe a little art? Just for like a copy for myself, I want to be like this. I'm kind of fucking uh, dead or alive by a uh, Bon Jovi playing. It's just like, I got these I'm a cowboy! Yeah. <laughs> and then um, Andrew was actually supposed to be the character that Lorenzo plays, uh, but then he didn't want to do it because he said, I'm not an actor. I'm Lorenzo Ocon, 
Friends usually referred to me as Lozo, and I would play the, um, I believe it was the busser named Andrew. Lorenzo, was that the first movie Lorenzo did with us? I don't recall anything previously to that. I mean, most of it was like hidden camera work, you know, kind of jackass, you know. Here we go. Oh, God! I'm covered in garbage water! Tom Green-esque type stuff, but you know, that was my first scripted role, and it was pretty fun. The reason his name's Andrew in the movie is because it's a homage to our friend Andrew Song, who let us use the uh, location, and also he was supposed to play the part, and then he, uh, he turned us down. Getting killed on screen. That was pretty cool. I love horror, so that was always cool. And I was a little disappointed because I got strangled. I was hoping to be a little more bloody or maybe get my head blown up. But um, that came in the future. In fact, they um, made it a bit of a tradition to kill me off in a lot of roles. <laughs> I got locked in a trunk, that was pretty fun. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I had to go limp. I, I, I like to think I hopefully did a good job of playing a dead body, so, you know. Uh, I remember, <laughs> I remember Lorenzo getting uh, very offended by the director's uh, uh, um, insults. Uh, about his acting and just his random, like, being uh, strange around the set, especially with uh, around the geishas. I got drunk on the set, the corpse got away, too. He got drunk and locked himself in the bathroom for two hours, we gave him sake. I never, um, I never had really, I think I had sake once before that, but I figured, hey, there's sake here. It's a first for everything. I just wanted to go all out, and I got a little overboard with it. <laughs> Andrew was like, all right, I gotta lock up, and Lorenzo was still in the bathroom. <laughs> A little FYI for you guys, if you look closely when Ray is taking James' character and pulling him out, if you look closely in the background, I'm passed out drunk on the table. So, <laughs> a little extra roll, even though I already had died, so. Yeah, that was my, that was my first Lorenzo experience. And I think, uh, I think it was my first time hanging out with Rich, too. I'm motherfucking rich killer. Holla. It's me. It's me. I'm the motherfucking sushi chef. Richard Kassemeyer, we have a bit of a history. He's definitely I think he's living shit on the fucking meat on. Bam! We went to high school together, El Camino High. Ah. And um, we didn't really hang around in high school together quite a bit. It wasn't so afterward. Yeah, Lorenzo, yeah. You want a crazy ass motherfucker. Skip six or whatever. We hung out officially for the first time when we did Rich and Lozo. All right, shut the camera off. This guy's an absolute fruitcake. Stop oh, the interview. I, All right. I'm black, okay? I'm black. What followed, we did Rich and Lozo part two a year after that, the, the following summer. What, you think because a girl is a slut or what? Look, she's not a slut, okay? She, okay, she was a slut, okay? And um, that's pretty much our main connection. And we hung out, you know, every occasionally for beer and stuff like that. Nah, I only see him when you guys, the whole cast, are around. But I don't, I don't waste my time. I like, I don't do that. I have other things to do. And we did uh, the corpse that got away together. Andrew, get the socket. What? <laughs> That was pretty good. It was a cameo from the both of us, you know. Yeah, Lorenzo, that crazy ass motherfucker. Shit, dude. I remember he was uh, being bossed around like a bitch. I guess, you know, people always like to see us together for some reason. I don't quite see the catch, but I guess different soaps for different folks, people like us. Off camera, like I were rolling a tobacco, the rolling tobacco and with my American Spirits cow, uh, pouch. And then the Renzo like looks down and say, is that me? Oh, I'm like, no, what the hell? 
<laughs> Hell a trip, man. Hell a trip, man. Oh, yeah, I always like to say, like, Rich, like, that's the most lines Rich has ever done, pretty much, and uh, it was great. It looks good in that hat, too. Well, I do remember I sang the infamous line. Uh, I asked Cairo, who hired you? And he said, you did. Who, who hired you? You did. So back when we were making the corpse that got away, before Michael Martin, we weren't as organized, no spreadsheets, no, uh, no calendars, nothing like that. Uh, we would literally just call people up and be like, hey, you wanna be in a movie tonight? We're filming in right now. Yeah, I remember we were literally like an hour away from filming and we hadn't cat got everybody casted yet. I remember there were three geishas that we were supposed to have on set and we didn't have any actresses. And back then we really didn't know a lot of girls that would do our movie, so we were like, what are we gonna do? So luckily Josh Nair, a good friend of mine who was on set to help us with makeup and, and costumes, he knew some people, so he called Melissa Roncall. Uh, I believe I called Rochelle Nand, and uh, Cairo came through at the last minute with Rovi Torres. And uh, these three girls did such a great job because they didn't know they were gonna be in a movie that night. They weren't authentically Japanese, but a little makeup and you know, you put them back about 10 feet, you really can't tell the difference. Man, the Asia, they were fine. Hella fine, beautiful. <laughs> the points I watch. Naked. Do not laugh. Do not laugh. Bro, you ruined the thing. Right, right, well, I know. Stop laughing. Guess I'll think about that. I'm like all the dudes of the Ready? Action. Another step up that we wanted to take with Corpse That Got Away was uh, with our blood effects. Uh, in our previous films, we would show someone shoot, cut away, cut back, and then that person would be dead and they'd have some blood on them. Uh, for this one, we really wanted to accomplish that in one shot, whereas Ray puts a gun to somebody's head, pulls the trigger, his brains go on the wall. And at the time we were talking about making The Corpse That Got Away, I had just started a job at Office Depot and made a good friend in Brian Grima. So my name is Brian. It's been 10 years. So back then, Daryl and I were first, or he first started working at Office Depot and he got to know me. And one of the first things he asked me since I told him some things I did, uh, if I was pretty handy making things, and next thing I know, I remember we were at Lowe's picking out parts because he wanted me to make a device that would shoot blood across the room. Dude, I want to win on tape. This is on tape. This is Brian J. Steiner. Brian Green. Jay. Daryl Dell. Brian J. Green? Yeah, we had this discussion. I'm about to do blood tests. What's your name, Jay? Number three. Joseph. Joseph pumping the shit out of that bottle. It's official. So it consisted of a Pepsi bottle, some PVC pipe, a valve, and we got an air pump. So you'd fill up the air pump, seal it off. We would load some fake blood in the tip of the shooter, release it, and it would just go flying across. Okay, so Brandon, you say, you say what? Right. So. Okay, what sucks is that shit's clear and I didn't see a goddamn thing on this. That's three. Alright. Go for it. Go for it. There and... again. Failure. Yeah, see, you need... We need, we, should, we need to put more in the tube is what it is. More blood? Did it dry in there? No, it's still wet. Go. Actually... That wasn't yeah. that bad. It was... After work one day, if I'm mistaken, and I remember being kind of dark, and yeah, we were just walking to the to the schoolyard and messing around with it because we didn't want to have to deal with the cleanup afterwards. It wasn't bad. It wasn't a lot that came out. So the other lead actor in The Corpse That Got Away is James Hay, 
who uh, we met through Kirsten, was working with him at Kincaid's, and he came to, to work on some films with us. Ah, dude, this guy seemed so great at first. I liked him a lot. Um, he seemed very friendly, he seemed really cool. You know, he was good to work with. He was the first professional actor that we had worked with. <laughs> 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 I don't know what the fuck happened. He turned out to be a phony. Um, I believe, you know, James Hay got, we were supposed to do a show with him, you know, and it sounded interesting, but James got drunk and started talking, bad mouthing, you know, the whole crew saying a whole bunch of shit about us. We were sitting on the balcony at his apartment in Culver City, and uh, James started going off on this tirade about how, oh, you fucking suck. The dollar's done, it's trash, man. Church, church, huh? Fuck you, fuck Cairo, fuck Ray, fuck everybody. And uh, I was pretty pissed off. And then I think um, him and Daryl nearly got in the fisticuffs over it. And I was mad because we gave this fucker uh, a lot of really good roles, I thought, and we had plans to shoot some more things in the future. So I told him, you know, same to you, pal, fuck off yourself, whatever. And then he threatened to throw me off the balcony. And that's when I thought, well, I guess that's the end of the James Hay show. That was the end of it. That was <laughs> that was pretty much like, see you later, James Hay. Hope he's doing well, but highly doubtful. Make no mistake about it. it. It's been 10 years, but you know, Dollars and Donuts is still going strong and only seems to be getting better by the day. We've grown and gotten, the movies have gotten way better in 10 years. I mean, hopefully they didn't get worse. <laughs> but uh, I'm very fond of it we because it uh, we work very closely with Daryl on the screenplay and it was based on something that I made before and that made it a little bit more special. So as flawed as the movie is now looking back on it, it's still one of my favorites uh, that we've ever done. It looks like shit, sounds like shit, but uh, the memory of making it and just the way it all came together and knowing that it started us on this path that we're still going on, so for that I always look back very fondly on the corpse that got away. Oh boy, uh, we have come a long way in the past 10 years. We've really evolved just everything in terms of special effects, visual effects, editing. Definitely gotten bigger, a lot more professional, bigger budget, better equipment. Camera equipment, lighting, just cinematography, production values. More in-depth scripts, that's for sure. I think a lot more fun, but I think the quality's gone up considerably. It's everything, our premieres are much better. We used to just do our stuff like, we used to rent out a bar and showed it on the screen at the bar, you know? And So f from premieres in clubs and bars to actual movie theaters, rather than handing out a bootleg looking DVD. We have come a long way. I mean, I'm very amazed. And we just keep, when we think that we're not gonna do any better, we outdo ourselves. And just we just keep doing better and better and better and just it's really come a long way. I can't believe it's been like 10 years since Corpse got away and people were asking me will there ever be a sequel and I told them yeah who knows maybe but let's go fuck yourself. Rich Kila. <laughs> That's all folks.